The MSNBC Un-American Activities Committee is in session and the aforementioned Tucker is in the dock. Nicole Wallace convened the usual MSNBC panel of deep state propagandists. First up was Frank Filiusi, the former assistant director of counterintelligence at the FBI, not to be confused with Peter Strzok, the former deputy assistant director of counterintelligence at the FBI. So he needs a longer business card. Mr. Filiusi, as a crack counterintelligence G-man, isn't buying Tucker's cockamamie story. I am not convinced at all that this whistleblower actually exists. In other words, what better way for Tucker Carlson to cover his rear end because he's called a Russian intelligence officer or intermediary for the Kremlin. He gets worried about it. He decides, I'm going to go on the offensive. I'm going to announce that the NSA is listening to me and have them try and deny it. And so I think it's good cover. But as you said, there's something much larger going on here. It is another page in the playbook of folks like Tucker Carlson and folks in the GOP who simply want to continue to erode the public's trust in their institutions. Oh, my. I like the way he painted all those wily e. coyote cacti behind him so we wouldn't know he's in the Yukon. That's your counterintelligence deep cover right there. So as this guy, Phil Yuzzi, sees it, the main problem with Tucker revealing that the National Security Agency is reading his emails is that it might erode the public's faith that the name of the National Security Agency suggests it has something to do with national security. If ever there were an institution in which the public's trust should be eroded, it's these guys. But don't even entertain that thought, because that'll make you just as anti-American as Tucker. Here's the second member of MSNBC's deep state propagandist panel, Andrew Weissman. If that name rings a vague bell, he was a member of Robert Mueller's Russia, Russia, Russia investigation and managed to parlay that into a book deal and a CNN gig. And Mr. Weissman thinks that Tucker, of all people, should know that when you discover that Big Brother is reading your emails, the appropriate response is to fill in a Ministry of Truth comment card and set up an appointment to come in and see the Commissar General so he can explain to you all the safeguards that are in place, but that if you're still not totally reassured, he'll ask for a budget increase so he can put some safeguards on some of the safeguards. You know, what I'm concerned about here is not that there was incidental collection when I am calling a foreigner, including, of course, if you try and reach out to Vladimir Putin, you can pretty much uh, be sure that you're uh, going to be uh, at high risk of being intercepted. He could have said, look, there's a First Amendment issue here, and I want to make sure that there are safeguards at the Department of Justice. But he didn't take that route. He did, as you said, and as Frank pointed out, he wanted to use this really for his own purposes and to sow distrust, which is, is so anti-American. Instead of raising a legitimate issue about safeguards in the system when you're dealing with journalists. Yes, Tucker is sowing distrust, which is so anti-American. Nothing says I'm a loyal, patriotic American like taking a relaxed attitude to the National Security Agency hoovering up your texts and emails. It was revealed in the Edward Snowden leaks back in 2013 that the NSA collected the communications of over a billion people. That's a seventh of the world's population. What do you think it's up to a decade on? A billion and a half? Two billion? Meanwhile, one guy, just one guy, just the one, Chairman Xi, is taking over the planet. But the big bloated behemoth of a national security agency is too busy collecting the emails of Gladys Scroggins of 27B Strathcona Gardens and the Outer Hebrides. The NSA has claimed that its surveillance program prevented 13 terrorism attacks in the United States. Obviously, it's failed to prevent many more than that. But taking their claim at face value, that would mean preventing one terrorism attack for every 76,923,076 people under collection. And in fact, there's not even any evidence for the prevention of those 13 attacks. Quote from the days when NBC's news division wasn't quite so gung-ho 
for surveillance state cheerleading. Quote, a member of the White House review panel on NSA surveillance said he was absolutely surprised when he discovered the agency's lack of evidence that the bulk collection of telephone call records had thwarted any terrorist attacks. It was, ha, huh, hello, what are we doing here? said Jeffrey Stone, a University of Chicago law professor, in an interview with NBC News. One question the White House panel was seeking to answer was whether it had actually stopped any terror attacks that might have been really big. We found none, said Stone. But presumably that could all change now that Tucker's emails are in the system. There's a fine line between a secret intelligence service and a secret police. The former is difficult business, the latter is a lot easier. And we have given our guys powers that incentivize any inclinations they might have in that direction. The one and only Tucker Carlson joins me now. Tucker, we're a couple of weeks into this thing. How are you feeling about it? Well, I, mean, I just, I don't watch a lot of television, so I'm always amazed when I see clips like that. Mm. I mean, first of all, to be lectured on patriotism by people who think America is systemically racist is, I mean, it's, it's beyond belief. Um, uh. The fact that Andrew Weissman is on television and apparently paid a corrupt prosecutor, which he is, he ought to be right. facing charges for what he did uh, mm. during the Russia investigation. And instead, he's waxing on about what patriotism is and how if you complain about the corrupt system, then you're unpatriotic, submit to, you know, an unjust system. Uh, or else you're yeah. a bad person. But at the very beginning, the former, the, the FBI, I think the FBI stooge at the, in the first clip said something that really does reveal a lot. He said, well, really, this is cover because Carlson was emailing with people or talking to people he shouldn't be talking to, and he was worried about that. And you think, who thinks like that? I'm an American. I can talk to anybody I want. I can have any opinion I want. I'm not embarrassed about my opinions. I'm not embarrassed about who I talk to. Why would I be? Again, if you think oh, I'm committing a crime, charge me with one. Who even think? I mean, that's a kind of totalitarian way to think, and I, and I hope it hasn't infected the country. Just to recap, as an American citizen, you have the right to talk to anyone you want to about anything you and, want to and reach any conclusion you want to. Those are the rules. Uh, the, that's absolutely true. And if you recall Major Hassan way back at the time of the Fort Hood attack, he was being monitored by three different intelligence agencies because it's money, uh, no uh, object uh, in, uh, in our, quote, intelligence community. And he said uh, he, it was determined by all three agencies that when he was speaking with the terrorist guy, Olaki, in Yemen, he was in contact with that guy. That, that didn't matter because that was consistent with his research interests. Right. Why, didn't, why, <laughs> why don't you get the pass that Major Hassan got uh, by those three cockamamie useless agencies a decade ago? Because they weren't trying to control and silence Hassan. And that's, mm. that's really the story here. It's not simply that my emails were collected by our intel bureaucracies, but that my name was unmasked and legally they would have had to, someone would have had to request that and that would have been signed off on uh, by the head of, by the director of the NSA. Um, and then that information was leaked to news agencies in an effort to discredit me. I'm not speculating about this. And just, just to say once again, this is not the kind of point that you would make lightly. I have zero interest in talking about myself or who I email or making a story yeah. about me. There's no kind of no upside in it for me, obviously. But it happened. It's an outrage. And if it continues to happen to others, and we know that it is, then democracy really does die. It's worth finding out how they did this, what the justification for it was. And it's worth punishing the people who did it, because if they continue to do it again, you can't have a functioning democracy. Well, I'd be interested to know whether they've actually done this to other people who then have. found out about it and decided not to do what you did. I mean, uh, those two FBI stooges, uh, Department of Justice stooges, are complaining that you had the cheek, the nerve, the <laughs> less majesty to go public with it. Um, and so I take it from that that Ooh. they've done this to other guys who decided just to go all quiet and uh, start doing, instead of talking about current affairs, decide to start doing ballet reviews or something. Well, well we know for certain that they have. And it, it mm. just so happens that, you know, I, I don't have anything to hide, and so I'm not embarrassed to say, hey, back off. You're not, it's illegal what you're doing. Mm. Don't do it.
But I know plenty of people who are too afraid to criticize them, including sitting members of Congress who are supposed to be overseeing them. So what does that tell you? If you have an intelligence agency with, as you pointed out, massive funding that operates independently of political control, of political leadership, then that undermines the very idea of democracy. They're not their own country. Right. They're bureaucrats right. who work for us. They're outraged when you ask them questions. They refuse to answer them. They act like, you know, where do you get off questioning me? Really? I mean, I just think if we allow that attitude to persist, then all is lost. No, the, the proper posture is, hey, federal bureaucrat, you work for me. I pay your salary. Answer the question now or you're fired. Like, why wouldn't right. that be Absolutely. our attitude? Absolutely. I would love to. I would love to hear a Republican uh, candidate, a Republican office holder, actually say, other than Rand Paul and one or two others, right. say exactly. these guys are out of control. They do nothing for national security. Uh, it's totally misnamed, uh, and, and they're just using it now systemically to backdoor their way into the lives of American citizens. They want to take down somehow. Well, that is exactly right, and of course, none do. And over in the Senate, I mean, the, the top Republican in the Senate, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, ask anybody who works in the United States Senate, and they'll tell you, you know, green light whatever they want. I mean, he, he, they endorse this stuff. I, I think Republicans have been very slow to understand that what these agencies are doing, and I'd include the FBI in this as well, which is a, a, huge, a huge intel gathering operation. It's not just a law enforcement mm -hmm. agency. What they're doing is totally corrosive of our system. If you're worried about our democracy, and I think we should be, this is something to fix right now. I wish the last administration had fixed it. They were afraid too. That tells you how powerful these people are. I'm not, it's not, look, I'm not a crazy person overstating the case. Mm. I spent 35 mm. years in Washington. I know exactly how it works. And so do these morons on TV too. They know, they know how it works and they're lying. One of the reasons why we're losing the uh, war on terror, Tucker, actually, is because we don't fight enough of it in public uh, with civilizational confidence, but we're right. doing it all with yeah. this secret surveillance state uh, yeah. where, where we're now effectively bringing the strategy that's failed in Afghanistan onto the home front. That's, that's what we're doing, Tucker. You know, we would get a lot farther if we had values that we could espouse in public be proud of. I mean, you, you can't be a powerful country if you don't believe in the ideas that undergird your society. And that's, I guess, another irony being lectured about patriotism by people right. who really don't believe in our founding documents yeah. and the basic principles of America. Oh, it's head yeah, spinning. You're, <laughs> oh, you're actually. There speaks truth from the anti-American folks. We'll see you in 40 minutes uh, or so, Tuck. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.